Hello, this is David of Bionic Turtle with a quick review of the logistic function and you can get this spreadsheet on the website. The logistic function is popular for transforming a credit score into a probability of default. And so here's a plot of the logistic function. You can see it's got this smooth S shape here starting at zero, accelerating into the S here and decelerating where it's asymptotic to the 1.0 100%. And this betrays to us that this is a cumulative distribution function or CDF. And the logist logistic function, what it does for us is if you focus on the x-axis here, it takes a credit score and then by computing the function here, looking up the result on the y-axis, we're transforming or mapping a credit score into a probability of default, which in most cases is more intuitive, the probability of default as the percentage. And so the appeal of the logistic is really indicated right here. If you if we look at it, the appeal is that it's simple to compute. One divided by one, the quantity one plus E, Euler's number raised to this power. And this is negative the product of two vectors. Hard to see, but I actually do have these bolded to indicate or to connote that it's vector notation. We've got the product of two vectors and that is weights um, the B is weights and the X is factors and then in order to multiply in order to do the matrix multiplication we want to technically want to transpose the weights okay but it's easier just to see an example of this formula here which I've got over here to the left and we just assume here that we've done the analysis and we can predict we think we can predict default of a company with two key variables. The first one is profitability. EBIT divided by total assets. Earnings before interest and taxes divided by total assets. The second one is a leverage ratio. Market equity divided by total liability. So to keep it simple, I've only got here the two factors, but the idea here with the vector notation is that we can, accom we can accommodate many different factors. And for example, in the Altman's Z as a linear discriminant, a model that that does have in fact uh, I think at least five factors I've just got the two and then we're saying that let's just say we figured out that the coefficients are negative eight and negative two and the reason these are negative is that as these ratios go up the probability of default goes in the other direction profitability as this goes up the probability of default goes down. This here, market equity divided by total uh, liability, as that goes up, the leverage is going down, and so is the probability of default going down. So the negative coefficients here indicate the fact that we're going in the opposite direction from the probability of default. So those are our coefficients, and I've got two companies here where we have we observe the company-specific performance on those factors. Company A here, profitability 0.1. That's EBIT to total assets. And market equity to total liability, that's our leverage ratios. We've defined it of three. And then deliberately, I've got company B doing better on both metrics, more profitable, lower leverage. And then finally here, we compute the credit score. So this is a linear probability model right here. And it's just a linear combination of our coefficients and our factors. So here, what, and what I'm doing in terms of the logistic function is I'm just computing here the exponent here, the product of the two vectors. So if we take company E, A, excuse me, it's a constant plus the coefficient multiplied by the company specific performance on that factor plus here, the negative two coefficient multiplied by the company specific performance of three. So you see how I've just got here, this uh, looks a lot like a multivariate regression or it's a linear combination. We're just taking the constant and then we're adding the product of the coefficient and what the company does on the factor plus the coefficient plus what the company does on the factor. And we could keep stringing that out as a linear combination. And what it produces for us in this case is a credit score of negative 3.8. Company B, same thing, shares the same coefficients and then has its own company specific performance where it's doing better. And so its credit score here is lower, negative 6.6. .6, but are, under our rules here, that's actually higher credit quality. And so that's 
then enter the logistic function which performs for us the service of computing this credit score which really doesn't have natural uh, it's hard to interpret naturally it performs the service here of converting those credit scores into a probability of default and visually that is just a mapping of values right around here into the um, y-axis equivalent of probability of default and so you can see right here for company A all I'm doing is implementing the logistic function and it really is pretty straightforward one divided by one plus E raised to the negative of here the product or the linear combination here which itself is the credit score so you can see that formula and so what we've done visually is we're somewhere right about here on the score negative 3.8 and we've computed the y value which in this case is the probability default of 2.19 company b is even further over here to the left negative six and it computes the probability default here of 0.14 percent so by applying this logistic function we've mapped the credit score to the probability default so that's pretty handy and it's really it's popular because here as a CDF it's going to constrain the probability of default to within zero and one or hundred percent which is where the probability of default needs to lie and just one other example because internally companies in some cases like to use ratings where they may have their own rating scale so for example a credit an internal credit rating of 10 could be a low quality and so just in terms of a scale that we're more familiar with where 100 is really outstanding or perfect credit quality. So that's a different scale. That's a more intuitive scale. We can still map that. Notice I've just got rescaling here. All I've done is take the internal rating, subtract 10 divided by negative 10. In order to rescale the internal ratings here, to their own different numbers and that so all I've done is if the internal credit rating is really high is perfect here at 100 that's going to map to a really low value in the logistic function here negative 9 and then at closer to uh, closer to 0 on the internal scale is going to get somewhere closer to here on the logistic so I remap the internal ratings to rescaled X values here, so or adjusted or rescaled credit scores, and then once I've done that, I can apply the logistic function in the same way that we did before. So, for example, internal rating of 70, which would be quite good in relative terms on the scale, or maybe above average, that would be rescaled here to a negative six, and then the neg so that negative six is right about here maps to or is transformed into per the logistic function a probability of default of 0.2 percent so that's an example of applying it to an internal rating set this is david harper the bionic turtle thank you for your time